the Ryzen 7 Gen 3. So I was running game mode at a fix. Now this, two cores will burst up to 4400, uh, but they don't really sustain that. So I am running essentially this across all cores and we're going to apply that. So we're going to run 4.3 gigahertz on all cores. All right, we're in the base settings stock. We're going to run this. So 9121. We're going to change this curve over here to go max, max, max. So it doesn't let you go too much. Uh, 2150, I'm going to feed it some more power. So most of these things are pretty power hungry. We're going to go to the 30 on that. And then on the memory, I'll see if it can take the top. So that doesn't give you a lot of room. So this is really why we need some other tools applied. Let's run now. now this is the only overclock we'll do, and then we'll switch cards. Well, it made it through the test. And we're at 96.75. So GPU temperature, GPU temperature on the first test hit a max of 69 and hit a max of 70. CPU stayed pretty relatively cool at 53C and that's not bad because all cores are running at 4.3 gigahertz. Let's try, this was setting in that vicinity, this is the 2070. So the main thing is I'm, I'm just doing a, a cursory check on the GPU performance on all these that I'm gonna include with the mining info. All right, so base clock, look at that. It's under RTX 2070 EVGA Black Edition out of the box is lower on at least this performance test. Feed it. You got to feed these more power when you're gaming with these. This leverage in the whole card. We'll do 200. We'll try that. And that's faster. 98, 93. The deals on the AMDs are hard to pass up. Yeah, local micro center, so, wow, 1,500 memories working. So 46.1 right now we're getting. I love crypto performance checks. These are all real world tests on YouTube or a joke. Uh, you know, uh, unless somebody, here's my problem with YouTube. And I love all the people that take a, an effort. We're going to let this run for a second because I need to wait for this this to hit. We need to see this active worker go up one. It gave me a negative share there. The problem with, so... Like making YouTube videos is, is like, I don't want to say it's a pain in the ass. It's a, there's a lot of effort that goes into it. If you just do a quick cursory check and you, you can report just kind of a baseline. But like when we were doing, when I used to do longer tests on like mining rigs and stuff, we'd have a lot more validity to what's going on. You guys get to see it in real time. That's why I like doing this stuff live. Because what I found is, is if you look at BBT in general, the bits we tripping at the start, I did a lot of just videos. But I found a lot more value that was happening with the community if I did them in front of people. Because you guys could see that if there are issues, how do we get through them? Plus that spins off a whole bunch of other content, right? Like how to fix problems or, you know, you guys, if you have friends or family or somebody that's in it, you guys can say, hey, just go watch this, man. I ain't got time to explain it to you. So the too long didn't read bros, it kind of sucks for if they have to go through and weed, weed through it. That's why doing all the streams on Twitch is where I've been doing just all the streams at and then doing the short kind of concise stuff on YouTube seems to be a much better play because if you guys are questioning the how I got there or whatever, you can see the video, right? You can go back and watch the longer stream portion of it so i agree with that kind of statement i think you need to do like if you're in this thing to try to work through the problems and stuff and you have the means to be able to start a video it's it's good to go through it with people so 23 mega hash right now now this is very variable so that's about 200 watts for the rtx 2070. now those are pretty expensive cards i don't i don't see anybody making a, a mining rig out of 2070s they're great cards, um, but it would be a very expensive ROI right now. 1660 Ti. I'm gonna do a stock test and then I'm gonna do an overclock test with this one. I just wanna get a benchmark on it. Give you guys a difference of, uh, I mean, this card here is what, 269 bucks, I think right now. It's P102, P104s, um, cheaper too. So we got a small little increase there, but not much, not really worth it. So 64, 91 so there was hardly any increase um on scaling there at all so we went from 6305 to 6491 so we're doing a stock claw our stock test right now on a gtx 1070 
6382 out of the box. So only much of a difference. So the GTX 1660 got 6305. This one got 6382 with base stock clocks. So essentially a 1070 is, from a graphics performance standpoint, almost exactly the same as the 1660, at least on the synthetic performance side. So 6720, so, and that was with a plus 150 and a plus 300. We're at 250 watts total. So, I mean, the fastest we got on the 1660 Ti was 6491. So the 1070 Founders Edition still reigns supreme, at least in 3D Mark.